In a world that was plunged in darkness, in a land surrounded by the extravagant Roman and promiscuous Persian empires, in an economically, politically, socially, militarily, ethically, and spiritually downtrodden Arabia, in an idol-worshipping, superstitious, ignorant, backward, barbaric, and misogynistic city, came a man, a light, who was set to change it all. A man who was sent as a mercy to mankind, was the best of all prophets, to whom came the best of all angels, with the best of all books, in the best of all languages, with a message for the whole of mankind of all times. His name was Muhammad. Peace be upon him. The Prophet Muhammad's ancestors. Lineage being an important consideration in Arab society, the Prophet's family tree was well documented. He was born into a family that traced its ancestry back to the Prophet Ibrahim Abraham through Ismail Ishmael. The Prophet's lineage is as follows, Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib bin Hashem bin Abdu Munaf bin Qusay bin Kalab bin Mara bin Kaib bin Luai bin Gala bin Fai bin Malik bin Nadir bin Kanana bin Kuzema bin Mudrika bin Ilyas bin Mud bin Nazar bin Mag bin Adnan. While all scholars agree that Adnan was the descendant of Ismail, there is much dispute about the number of generations between the two and the names of each descendant. The Prophet's mother was Amina, the daughter of Wab bin Abdu Munaf bin Zura bin Kalab. Kalab also appears as a paternal ancestor of the Prophet. It is said that his real name was Urwa or Hakim, but he was known as Kalab because of his passion for hunting with dogs called Kalab in Arabic. The Prophet's tribe the Prophet belonged to the tribe known as Quraysh, the most respected tribe in Arabia. Quraysh was, in fact, the surname of Fai bin Malik or Nadir bin Kanana. Later, his progeny came to be known by the name Quraysh. The Quraysh enjoyed a position of honor in the peninsula. One member of this tribe, Qusay, played an especially vital role in establishing the greatness of this tribe. His real name was Zayd, and upon his father's death, his mother settled among the Azra tribe near Syria. It was there that Qusay was brought up. He returned to Mecca during his youth, and assumed the trusteeship of the Kabar. Because of his prestigious position, he was at liberty to open the door of the Kaaba whenever and for whomsoever he liked. He established the system of playing host to the pilgrims who journeyed to Mecca, preparing large quantities of food for them, and serving beverages made from honey, dates or raisins. Qusay also built a house north of the Kaaba, which he named Dar al-Nadwa, and in it were held many of the tribe's official activities. Dar al-Nadwa housed the tribal parliament, and marriages were also performed on its premises. Qusay was entrusted with the standard and bow of the Quraysh. No one but he had the right to fasten on the battle standard. Gracious and wise, he was obeyed unhesitatingly by his tribesmen who, under his leadership, settled in Mecca, and grew from a scattered band of people into a homogeneous community. Lineage The Prophet's lineage is called Hashmi after his great-grandfather, Hashem. Hashem assumed the position of host to the pilgrims, a privilege which, after him, was transferred to his brother, Muttalib. After Muttalib's death, the progeny of Hashem reclaimed this privilege and retained it until the advent of Islam. Hashem was very well respected and earned the title Said Bartha, chief of Bartha. He was called Hashem, one who mashes something, because he used to mash pieces of bread in meat and soup and distribute it for others to eat. The Quraysh were merchants by profession, and Hashem arranged trade journeys for them to Yemen each winter and to Syria each summer. He obtained security for them from the authorities in both these countries. In Surah Quraysh, a chapter of the Quran is called the Surah, Allah reminds the Quraysh of the debt to him for these important trade expeditions. Hashem once passed by Yathrib, later known as Medina, en route to Syria, and there he married Salma bint Amra a lady from tribe Banu Adi bin Najjar. He halted there for few days and then left for Syria. He passed away in Gaza, a famous city in Palestine. 
At the time of his departure, Selma was pregnant. She gave birth to a son whose hair had white streaks. She therefore named him Shaiba, which means one with gray hair. None of Hashem's relatives in Makkah knew about the birth of Shaiba. Eight years later, however, Mutalib found out about his dead brother's son and decided to bring Shaiba to Makkah. When he entered Makkah with Shaiba, the people thought the young boy was Mutalib's slave and referred to Shaiba as Abdul Mutalib, which means Mutalib's slave. Thus, Shaiba became known as Abdul Mutalib. Abdul Mutalib grew up to be a very handsome man and became a leading figure of the Quraysh tribe. He was the chieftain of the Quraysh and oversaw the tribe's trade caravans. Famous for his generosity, he was called the generous. He gave his leftovers to the needy, and even to animals and birds. For this reason, he was described as the feeder of men on earth and of beasts and birds on the mountaintops. Abdul Muttalib also had the honor of rediscovering the sacred well of Zamzam. This well had gushed forth when the infant Ismail kicked at the dry sand while his mother, Haja Hager, searched for water. The location of the well had been forgotten ever since the tribe of Jahum covered it when they were being exiled from Mecca. One night Abdul Muttalib had a dream in which he was shown where to dig the well. When he started digging next to the Kaaba, the water of Zamzam began to flow again. It was also during Abdul Muttalib's time that the Kaaba was attacked by the Abyssinian conqueror Abraya and his men, whom the Quran refers to as the companions of the elephant. Abraya advanced with an army of 60,000 men, intent on destroying the Kaaba. By destroying the Kaaba, he hoped to divert Arab pilgrims to his church in Yemen. Abraya reached the valley of Mahassa, between Muzdalifa and Mina, ready to invade Mecca. As he advanced with his elephant, the beast that had terrified all of Mecca suddenly refused to move. As for the 60,000 soldiers, Allah, in defense of his sacred house of worship, sent flocks of birds to pelt the invaders with stones. The soldiers were repulsed, and they lay felled by the stones, their bodies resembling mashed corn. Apart from the miraculous intervention of Allah in defense of the Kaaba, this episode in Meccan history showed the strength of Abdul Muttalib's character. He stood up to Abraya's might in defense of his own property, unshakable in his faith that Allah would protect his sacred house, the Kaaba. Abdul Muttalib's son, Abdullah, the father of the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him, was a handsome youth. He was called to be the sacrificed in reference to the rediscovery of Zamzam. When Abdul Muttalib was digging beside the Kaaba in search of the old well, the Quraysh watched him idly. Once he began to reach wet soil, they insisted on sharing in his discovery, and they raised a great clamor. Abdul Muttalib vowed to Allah that he would sacrifice one of his ten sons if he were allowed to uncover the well. In the end, Abdul Muttalib continued excavating and discovered the old well. Afterwards, he drew lots to determine which son he would sacrifice, and Abdullah was chosen. Abdul Muttalib took Abdullah to the Kaaba and was prepared to sacrifice him, but the Quraysh, particularly Abdullah's brothers and maternal uncles, were opposed to the sacrifice. Finally, it was decided that 100 camels should be sacrificed in his place. Hence the prophetess peace be upon him, called the descendant of the two sacrificed ones, Ismail and his own father, Abdullah. Similarly, he is referred to as the descendant of the two elders held for ransom, for Ismail was ransomed for a ram and his father for a hundred camels. Abdullah was married to Amina, the daughter of Wab. Wab was a chieftain of Banu Zara, shortly after the marriage, became pregnant, but before she could give birth to their child, Abdullah was sent by his father to Yathrib or Syria on business. Tragically, he passed away in Yathrib on the return journey and was buried in the house of Nabga Dubayani. Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him is born. Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him was born in Sheb Banu Hashem in Mecca. It was a Monday morning in spring, the ninth day of Rabi, al awal according to some sources it was the twelfth of Rabi, al awal 50 to 55 days after Abraya's failed attack on the Kaaba. In Arabic, the word for elephant is feel, and hence the year came to be known as Am al-Feel, the year of the elephant. In the Gregorian calendar, 
The date corresponds to April 22, 571 CE. While Amina was pregnant, she had a dream that a light was emitted from her lower body that illuminated the palaces of Syria. When she went into labor, Shifa bint Amra, the mother of Abdul Rahman bin Auf, served as midwife. Abdul Muttalib received the news of his grandson's birth with joy. He took the newborn to the Kaaba and invoked Allah's blessings and gave thanks. Believing his grandson would grow up to be highly praised, Abdul Muttalib named him Muhammad, which means, he who is praised. In keeping with Arab tradition, he then shaved the baby's head and circumcised him on the seventh day. Afterwards, he invited his fellow Meccans to a feast. Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him was first nursed by his mother, and then by Amaman, his father's slave. An Abyssinian whose real name was Barakar, she embraced Islam and migrated to Medina, where she died six months after the Prophet's peace and blessings be upon him death. Foster brothers Thuwaybar, the slave of Muhammad's uncle Abu Lahib, also nursed the infant. At that time, Thuwaybar was also nursing her own child, Masru, as well as Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib, and Abu Salamar bin Abdul Asad Makzumi. Hence these three men became foster brothers because they were nursed at the same breast. In the care of Haley Masadia it was customary among the citizens of Mecca to put their newborns in the care of Bedouin women who would raise them for a couple of years in the desert. The Meccans believed that the unspoiled, rugged desert environment would make their children strong and hardy. Furthermore, an upbringing among the Bedouins ensured that the children would learn the purest form of the Arabic language spoken throughout Arabia. Abdul Muttalib was looking for one such Bedouin woman who would serve as a wet nurse and take his grandson to the desert. Some women from Banu Saad bin Bakr bin Hawazen came to Mecca to offer their services to local families. Abdul Muttalib asked each of them to take his grandson Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him but all of them declined the offer when they were told the child's father was dead. They felt the family of a fatherless child would not be able to reward them handsomely. Halima bint Abu Duwayb had also came to Mecca that day. While all the other Bedouin women had found children to nurse, she was not so fortunate. She saw Abdul Muttalib with an infant in his arms and took pity on the child who had been rejected by the other women. She and her husband took the infant Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him back to the desert. Halima was happy she was not returning empty-handed. Halima and her husband, Harith bin Abdul Utsa, both belonged to the tribe of Saad bin Bakr bin Hawazin. Their children became the prophets peace and blessings be upon him foster brothers and sisters. The names were Abdullah, Aniza, and Judima, who was better known as Shema. Judima also nursed the prophet peace and blessings be upon him.